It's not very common for an emergency nurse to manage a ventilator. We know how to push the button that turns off the alarm and call respiratory for assistance, but do you actually know how to handle the ventilator? Not many of us do. So, we're going to walk you through the ventilator in a series of audios. You're not going to walk away a respiratory therapist, but hopefully you will feel a little more comfortable handling the vent. In this series, let's start with the basics. What is mechanical ventilation? What is it used for? And what are the benefits and risks of using it? If you're already familiar with these concepts, we suggest you skip this audio and move on to the next one, which focuses more on how ventilators work. So, let's get started. A mechanical ventilator is a machine that aids in a patient's ability to ventilate. In other words, their ability to take in oxygen and remove carbon dioxide. Modern ventilators consist of a pump machine and a tube that slides into the trachea to control airflow. While on a mechanical ventilator, a hollow tube connects the patient to the machine. A patient stays on a mechanical ventilator until he or she is able to achieve spontaneous, effective breathing on their own. Mechanical ventilation is considered an invasive procedure because it involves placing an instrument tube inside the patient's airway. It is also considered an aerosol generating procedure, so be mindful of your PPE. Make sure you are wearing an N95 and face shield per CDC guidelines because mechanical ventilation can cause viruses to aerosolize. It is important to keep in mind that the use of this machine does not address the underlying condition of the patient. Rather, it helps the patient achieve ventilatory stability while medications and other treatments actually promote healing. With the current pandemic, it's important to understand that ventilators do not cure COVID-19 but they help support lung function while a patient's body is fighting the infection. Lungs are interwoven with blood vessels, which is how oxygen gets into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide gets carried out. COVID-19 makes this exchange more difficult in the most severe cases because a patient's lungs are inflamed and the alveolar spaces are filled with fluid. This also happens with infections like pneumonia, a ventilator essentially helps a patient's lungs accomplish this task. Mechanical ventilation is used on patients who are unable to sustain adequate ventilation that is needed to maintain normal levels of gas exchange. The use of mechanical ventilation helps normalize arterial blood gas levels and acid-base imbalance by providing oxygenation and by removing carbon dioxide or ventilation. Mechanical ventilation can decrease the patient's work of breathing by unloading respiratory muscles in a synchronous manner. So, what are the benefits of mechanical ventilation? Well, there are many benefits of placing patients on mechanical ventilation. By helping the patient achieve stable oxygenation and ventilation, maintain a patent airway, and maintain effective gas exchange. While mechanical ventilation has its benefits, it also comes with associated risks and complications, some of which can endanger a patient's life. Some complications are related to the amount and pressure of the air going into the patient's lungs. Other complications are related to the invasive nature of mechanical ventilation, which can introduce bacteria further down into the airways. Patients with severe COVID-19 disease typically develop acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, which require a very delicate balance in ventilator settings and medication management to prevent multiple organ dysfunction syndrome, MODS, and death. Now that you have a little background of what mechanical ventilation is, what it is used for, and what are the benefits and risks, you'll have a better foundation for understanding the components of the ventilator, which you can learn about in the next module of this series. Resources used to develop this audio cast include the American Association for Respiratory Care, Johns Hopkins Medicine, Merck Manuals, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.